Hello everyone and welcome to the Frame Channel. A full-time sheet metal rolling mill was first used in the late 16th century. But the mass production of steel became possible only during the Industrial Revolution in 1856, when Englishman Henry Bessemer patented a process for forming low-cost steel from molten pig iron. In the past 50 years, however, steel rolling processes have become fully automated, with computer controls enabling the achieving of cutting and shaping accuracies of within 50 microns. This accuracy is achieved through very precise measurements. Despite the extensive evolution of the technology in the industry, the basic chemical reactions needed to fuse iron and carbon into steel have remained the same over the years. There are two main steel rolling processes, hot rolling and cold rolling, both of which use large rollers and intense pressures to compress the alloy and change its shape. The difference is that hot rolling requires less force as it's done at or above metal recrystallization temperatures. For steel production, this recrystallization temperature ranges between 400 and 700 degrees Celsius, with the required heating rate and soaking time determined by the overall steel composition. Hot rolled steel is heated in a temperature controlled furnace and then pressure washed to remove the mill scale oxidation that forms on the surface. It then enters the roughing mill where it's squeezed between rollers that exert thousands of tons of force on the heated steel, a force capable of thinning massive chunks down to very slender widths. At this point, the steel, called a transfer bar, is rolled up into a coil box where it's kept at a uniform temperature of around 1,050 degrees Celsius. Then the edges are chopped off and it's rolled to the required thickness in a finishing mill, where high-tech sensors monitor the speed and tension involved. The finished strip of steel is cooled and coiled up at a temperature of between 150 to 750 degrees. Hot rolling is typically cheaper than cold rolling because it's more energy efficient and has fewer processing stages. Achieving precise measurements is more challenging when using hot rolled steel because the alloy shrinks as it cools down. Computers controlling the automated rolling systems check the steel multiple times every second as it passes through the rollers, offering far more vigilance than the human eye. In state-of-the-art rolling machines, lasers are used to carry out defect detection. Due to the fact that hot rolled steel is cooled after processing, and because steel shrinks slightly when it cools, there's less control over its final shape, making it less suitable for high precision applications where minutely specific dimensions are crucial. The benefit of cold rolling, on the other hand, is that it's done at room temperature, so no shrinkage is registered. However, in most cases, steel must be hot rolled before it can be cold rolled making the process more costly. Cold rolled steel is approximately 20% stronger than hot rolled steel. During cold rolling, the steel is compressed to achieve a lower density but higher tensile strength with improved surface finish and tighter tolerance. Thus, the final product is a stronger and harder metal, more suited for high stress applications than hot rolled steel. Steel is a solid alloy of iron and carbon that is used in almost every industry and aspect of our lives. It's one of the most versatile materials in existence with a major advantage that it can easily be recycled and reused. 
statistics over the past 70 years indicate an exponential growth in global crude steel productions from just 189 million tons in 1950 to 1,878 million tons in 2020. That's enough to build approximately 31,000 Empire State Buildings or mold over 8 million wind turbines. Furthermore, the 3% growth rate registered between 2015 and 2020 evidently provoked greater automation and more advanced industrial methods in the steel rolling process to meet up with global market demands. By applying these advanced methods, China is by far the largest producer of steel with a 53% market share, followed by India, Japan, and the United States. Today, the industry is worth an estimated $840 billion, with projections suggesting that it will reach a value of $1.43 trillion by 2028. The construction industry is the world's largest consumer of steel, accounting for 50% of the steel used. The second largest user of steel is in the automotive industry, where the use of high-strength steel is playing an important role in helping the industry meet its fuel efficiency goals. With parts like car doors, manufacturers get their material in the form of steel sheets, then cut them to required sizes before using a press to force the sheets of steel into the desired shapes. This process is called stamping. These pieces are then welded together to form the layers of the door. CNC laser machines are further used to cut and drill the necessary cavities for individual components. According to recent estimates, the global steel market for automotive and aerospace applications is expected to reach a whopping $165 billion by 2026 up from $120 billion in 2018. This increase is mainly driven by a growing demand for lightweight vehicles. China currently dominates the steel market as both the biggest producer and also biggest consumer of steel products. But with the globalization of the industry increasing year on year, will China continue to dominate the industry? The Chinese steel industry has committed to a 30% reduction in carbon emissions by 2030, but the country is still forecasting an emissions peak in 2025. Meanwhile, Australian steel giant Fortescue Future Industries is piloting the drive to produce carbon-neutral steel using green hydrogen energy. So whilst the methods of steel production are changing with more innovative machines, the future of steel will need to be powered by renewable energy sources if it is to remain a big player in the world's low-emission economy. That's the end of this feature on the frame. I hope you enjoyed it. Make sure to subscribe to this channel to catch us on our next video. See you next time!